Uh, folks, uh, sad news over the weekend when playwright, poet, and author Inozaki Shange died Saturday. She was 70 years old, of course, most acclaimed for the 1975 uh, play uh, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Of course, that was made out into a movie by Tyler Perry. Uh, he paid tribute to her uh, this weekend as well with a photo of her and all the women who were in that particular movie as well. Uh, of course, that play, more than 750 uh, performances. And so over the weekend, a number of black women were tweeting about uh, her impact as well in terms of the kind of coverage. Uh, and, of course, that film, you might remember, starred uh, Tandy Newton, Kerry Washington, uh, Anika Noni Rose, Janet Jackson as well. But beyond that, she published a 19 19- poetry collections, six novels, five children's books, and three collections of essays and taught at several universities, including Yale, Howard, New York University, uh, among others. And joining us right now uh, to talk about uh, her and her legacy uh, is the co-founder of the Hurston Wright Foundation, Marita Golden, and also still joined by Avis Jones DeWeaver, Michael Brown as well. How you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Glad to see you. And so when, when we... Uh, most folks, again, know her for that one play. Uh, but what should folks know that they maybe not know about her? Well, we were very honored to honor Ntozaki just one week ago mm. at the Hurston Wright Foundation's annual gala. We presented her with the North Star Award in recognition for her canon of literature as well as her incredible literary activism. And she is mostly known for colored girls, and it really rocked, literally rocked the world, uh, the socio-cultural world of the mid-1970s. Uh, the, the Cora poem play drama appeared at a time when people like Toni Morrison, Alice Walker, Gloria Naylor were writing about the lives of black women. Well, that play came along and spoke about the lives of black women in, with even more thunderous honesty. And so she gained a reputation for boldness, for a kind of literary braveness that really paved the way for a lot of us, including myself. I was just beginning to write, and I think when I saw that play, I began to f- figure out what I wanted to write. She was an amazing woman. Um, you say on her last week, um, was she... How does she appear? Well, Ntozaki had had two strokes. Mm -hmm. And what's most amazing is that she was in a wheelchair. That that is, she couldn't walk. After the stroke, she had to learn to read, write, talk all over again. And she wrote her poetry using um, voice recognition on the computer. She was totally active. She was a living, working artist. She'd been to Puerto Rico after the hurricane down there. She was traveling all over. She had a new book, ironically called Wild Beauty, which is what I really think she was, a wild beauty. And so even as she um, had these health challenges, she was traveling. She was reading her. She read at Bus Boys and Poets on Tuesday Mm. and died on Friday. So she was an incredible model of the power of art to allow you to overcome challenges. She suffered with bipolar um, around that. She had some some dark periods, but her art was something that she hoped would always help her move mountains. Uh, Avis, uh, again, there were a number of sisters who were tweeting over the weekend just talking about her, her place when you talk about black feminism. Absolutely. It's so important. I love the word that you use, boldness, honesty. You know, that it it was groundbreaking to see yourself in her work and to see people that you know in your in her work, because so often black women's experiences are not centered in our society. In many respects, it's invisible. So to have someone not only pull back the covers, but to show all the corners and maybe some of the dark spots and some of the brightest spots and the most bold and just beautiful ways, it's it. It's touching. And to do that at a time in which it was, quite frankly, part of the groundbreakers was especially important. Um, What would you say to 
um, a young woman who's millennial or who is a uh, what is it, Gen Z? What is it, Gen? I don't know. What, I don't know what all the letters are now. I don't know if it's Y Z A A B B C C. What What would you say to a, a generation of women uh, who uh, who were not here in the seventies when uh, when that play hit, when that production hit, when that when that book hit, uh, who may not understand her importance? Well, sh- I would just say read her work because it is perennially relevant. It didn't perish in importance and significance. And um, her plays, her poems, now that we've lost her, they comfort us, and her legacy endures. So she's as fresh today as she was in the 70s. Uh, And uh, one more thing for you. Uh, when uh, Obviously, when someone passes, uh, there are so many different uh, people remember them in so many different ways. Uh, So for you, your favorite piece of work from her? Well, I loved her poetry. In fact, um, I don't know that I can say that there was... What I loved about Antizaki was that she loved her people. And if you read her... She always got accused of... She hated black men, but if you really look at her, her <laughs> Wait, poetry... Hold on, did she get accused of hating oh, black men, or she, did she hate black no, men? No, she got accused of gotcha. that. She married two and had a child with one. So she didn't hate black men. But in her poetry, you see her love of black people, her love of justice. She spoke Spanish. She was bilingual. In fact, her new poetry book is in Spanish and English so that she was loved globally. And she's just a... So there's, I can't say there's any one poem. I love the life she lived. All right, then. We'll, we'll leave it right there. I we'll appreciate it. Thanks a lot for your remembrance. <laughs> Mm-hmm.